We're going to see this same thing here this time on this athlete for the U.S. The first thing you start to see her do is her body is going to lower. This lowering essentially takes the muscles of the hips, the glutes if you would, and stretches or loads them. If you look at her left foot, notice as she lowers her body that her left foot goes from the starting position and that left foot actually moves to a position outside or to the left of where she started. Some coaches will consider this a wasted step. It's a wasted step if the body doesn't go somewhere faster. And in this case, her body and all these athletes do the same thing. They close out faster to their left by getting their foot, their left foot in this case, moving outside to the left in the, at the same time. Her upper body is starting to lean to her right in the direction she's going. Similar to a sprinter coming out of the blocks, there is a lean that happens, leaning in the direction we're going, and that left foot stepping outside of its original position helps speed this process up. By the time her right foot comes down, actually on the ground right there, I'm going to go back and show you that, her right foot is going to drop underneath her hips. So by the time the ball of the foot hits on the right foot, down it's underneath her hips or even slightly behind her hips and her upper body is leaning forwards in the direction she's trying to go. Once again in simple terms it's faster if you do this. These are not wasted steps these are speed or acceleration steps and allowing her body to lower to load the hips and to lean in the direction she's going it's in fact faster than if she would have taken her right foot and stepped out to the right which is uh, what has been traditionally taught for many years. As she comes in once again and starts to go from her <clears throat> position where she's accelerating over and now going to go vertical, her heel, her left foot heel comes out in front of her, right foot's going to do the same thing. These are braking steps. Those, her feet are now out in front of the hips. Uh, going to slow her direction towards the outside down. She's going to get her feet more underneath her hips because now the, her body needs to go vertical so she's got her feet underneath her hips and she can now explode more vertically versus uh, to the side or horizontally if you would. So what we're actually going to look at here is uh, four blocks and the first thing that we're going to actually concentrate on is uh, just the, the feet positioning. Okay so right now we're actually a bit further then uh, shoulder width apart. Um, I'll talk about this uh, uh, in a second, maybe in the second clip. But what we really want to concentrate on is where does she make her first uh, movement uh, towards that, that outside block. So we'll just go slow. We're going about a quarter speed here. Uh, but watch that left foot and, and the right foot, uh, particularly the left foot in this case. So the first thing that she did there, and I'll actually just kind of slide the video back a bit, is you can actually see that Although she's, she's wanting to move to the right, her first movement is going to be to shift all of her weight onto her left foot so that she's actually uh, propelling herself or accelerating, or accelerating herself uh, towards the right. So let's go frame by frame. So she's shifted all of her weight onto that left foot and now her center of mass is actually going to the right. So this is probably quite similar to if you can imagine uh, sprinting out of the blocks where your center of mass is always in front of you or going in the direction that you want to be going in. Um, and your, your contact on the ground is actually behind you. So this, this ensures basically that, that your center of mass is, uh, is going in the direction that you want to go and that force vector is actually going in the same direction as well. So let, let's just speed through um, this video now to watch. So you can see it at all times when she's actually approaching to uh, the right. So I'll just uh, rewind that back for you. that her weight is as much uh, forward to the right as possible uh, throughout her approach as opposed to behind her if we had taken a large step. So we'll just play through the rest of that video. We see the same thing in this athlete here. We're going to see the same thing. Her body's going to lower. It's going to load her hips. Her left foot stepping to the left as she moves to the right. Her right foot when it comes down, when it actually contacts the ground, is going to be ideally underneath her hips or even slightly behind her hips. Her upper body is leaning forward 
and she's going to get from point A to point B faster because of that. Now we come in and these become deceleration or braking steps. You see the heel coming down. If we now look at the lines that are on the screen, we're going to look at a bend, most importantly at the hip joint here, because she's going to start to go vertical here and we need to be able to use the glute muscles uh, to be able to jump up in the air. As she comes in, you'll look at the two lines there from the up the torso and the thigh, and we're looking for the bend to actually occur at the hip. And this is representative of a pretty good angle there to get up off of the ground using her hip. We're not looking for her lower back to round and use her back to jump, which you see in a lot of juniors. Um, we're looking for the glutes, the hip muscles to power us up. From a strength and condition perspective, part of what we'll be doing at the start of the year with the athletes are fundamental or basic exercises that teach them to have the ability to load their hips to use those glute muscles to power up off the ground and that requires not only learning how to load or stretch those but it also requires exercises that we do what might be considered more mobility exercises where when the athlete starts at the start of the year they don't have a lot of mobility in their hips their hips can't lower very low and so we're working on them being able to actually lower their body from the hips, not the lower back. Um, same same thing. Thing. We'll work early on in the year on exercises, strength conditioning wise, at work on mobility, stability, meaning control to actually take and move the hips vertical as that athlete performs the, the activities. So I'm just going to pause there. We'll look at the feet and we'll go slow. All the weight is onto that left foot. Her center of mass is to the right. We're going more to the, uh, as we go to the right again. Now she's, she's ready to accelerate going to the right. Um, the reason I had mentioned earlier about the, fit, uh, the feet being uh, more than shoulder width apart is that if you were to actually have taken a, a jump in the middle, uh, the, the knees would have actually had to, to go inwards, thus increasing the cue angle, which is a bit of a concern uh, for, for jumping. Um, so that, that is something to monitor. I, I would probably recommend to have the feet um, closer in, um, and then therefore you could actually take a step out to the left if you're moving to the right. So that first step could actually go outwards and then um, accelerating yourself to the right as opposed to already starting off uh, very far, uh, very wide. Going to the right, and right there, I'm just going to pause. So right now, the numbers there, I don't think that there's anything in the literature that necessarily suggests what the optimum angle is. Um, however, one thing that we do want to consider is if she was any further lower in her stance, um, all of her center of mass would then also be behind her, um, thus creating space uh, in between the jump, and she'd actually probably be jumping backwards as opposed to either jumping straight up or even a bit forwards. So that is something to keep in mind that we don't want to get too deep uh, into the jump um, or else we, we may end up actually not going in the direction that we want to be going in. Again, there's, there's no... If we look at this last clip and we look at the outside and the middle coming in, you'll notice on the right side um, if you look at the angle illustrated by the red line between the, the upper torso, the spine if you would, and the thighs, this is a little lower. This athlete gets a lot lower than what's optimal here. And actually, as we, as we move this forward, what you're going to notice is the first part of the movement as she comes up is actually her back extending. And what I'm looking at and wanting you to notice and see is that her back starts to come up. <clears throat> Pardon me, her, her chest starts to come up, but you don't really see a lot of movement yet with a hip. That'll tell you that she's like a lot of junior athletes that are using her back muscles more to jump rather than using her hip and glute uh, muscles, which is what we'd look for. The <laughs> point here is that we're really not looking for athletes to get that low on a block jump. If we look at the middle as she comes in, <coughs> that's a better angle there. And if you just look at those two angles, that angle on the middle coming in looks like she's at about a 90 degree angle from her upper torso to her hips. Uh, and the, the outside is much lower than that and, and once again not optimal. The middle is more optimal in this case. If you just compare the simple message here of the outside to the middle here, we're not looking for the athlete to get so low and especially using 
uh, the back, the chest dropping. We want the head up. There is going to be a forward lean. You'll see the upper torso for both of these guys bending forward. We want the bend at the hips, and as they come up, we want to see the hips moving up right away and not the back and chest coming up without the hips moving.